What's going on guys, and if you're here, you're probably used to seeing me playing either MLB, NBA, uh, but I'm starting something new on the channel that I've wanted to for a long time, and I just want to tell stories of some of my favorite MLB guys, because I am a huge MLB fan, and today we are starting off with Eric Thames, and like I have followed this guy for a very, very long time when he played with the Blue Jays, I was, I, I was a huge fan of him, I saw him play in Seattle, uh, so I am going to be telling you guys his story. I don't want to give too much away, but all I want you guys to know is this is going to be not the complete direction of my channel, but this is going to become a part of my channel. And if you guys want to see another one of a certain player, make sure to let me know in the comments. But yeah, let's jump in to the story of Eric Thames. Thames grew up in the San Jose Santa Clara area and from a very young age had a very clear passion for baseball. His parents realized this passion and decided to put him in an all boys private school that had a strong focus on athletics. Seeing all of his success now, it might surprise you to know that baseball did not always come easy to him. And as a freshman, he was actually the third string shortstop on the junior varsity team. Obviously, not being satisfied with this, he continued to work hard and by senior year in 2004, he was named the team MVP. After high school, Thames sat out a year and attended Calibro College, but in 2006, he decided to get back at it and began playing for West Valley Community College where he would go on to become an all-conference player. He then decided to go take that next step up and decided to transfer to Pepperdine University where he was able to get enough attention to eventually get drafted. However, it was not where he would have hoped and he was taken with the 1,191st pick in the 39th round to the New York Yankees. Being he was such a low pick and his chances of going to the MLB were so low, he decided to go back to Pepperdine University where he would be able to bat 407 with 13 home runs and was named the conference MVP. With all this success in Pepperdine, he was getting lots of attention from scouts and was expected to be taken in the first three rounds. Unfortunately, however, he would tear a quad muscle near the end of the season. This caused him to fall to the seventh round where he would be selected by the Toronto Blue Jays to begin his road to the show. On May 18th, 2011, Thames made his MLB debut against the Tampa Bay Rays. He was also in this debut, able to get his first big league hit, driving in longtime Blue Jays second baseman, Aaron Hill. Throughout his first season with the Jays, he hit 12 home runs, drove in 30 RBIs, and held a very respectable 262 average in his 95 game. After this season, he ended up getting in a position battle with the Blue Jays' longtime fielder and once promising talent, Travis Snyder. Thames was able to make the opening day roster. He, however, only played 43 games that year, had just okay numbers, and at the end of the 2012 season, Thames was traded way out to the West in a trade for Steve Dalabar to the Seattle Mariners. In Thames' first season with the Mariners, he played only 40 games and had his worst batting average of his career hitting only 220. This low batting average and lack of production would really put him on the hot seat and Seattle in free agency would go on to add Jason Bay and Raul Abanez. These two new players would end up outshining Thames and Thames was sent down to the Norfolk Ties where he would struggle in that season as well only batting 252 with 13 RBI. So Thames at this point was in a really tough spot and a spot that many MLB players face all the time. Yeah, he was very, very promising at one point for the Blue Jays. Double A, Triple A, all of those amazing numbers get sent up to the majors and does not perform to the expectations. So what happens to those guys? We see those guys all the time on TV. You see them come into the game, they play a little bit, and then what happens? Well, in Eric Thames' case, he gets sent down to Triple A, traded all over the map. And for many people, this would be the time when the story ends. And not, not like completely, like they might have a career in double A AA and triple A, but like for Eric Thames, his story is just beginning. After Thames was pretty much traded to nothing for the Orioles, he once again struggled, and then he was claimed by the Astros. He, however, did not play many games in the Astros farm system, and this is when the North Korean Baseball League came calling. Astros would release Thames so he could sign an $800,000 contract playing in the North Korean Baseball League for a team known as the NC Dinos. Means that the Dinos only wanted to sign him for one year. We can assume that they did not have a lot of confidence in him either because really, no one in the MLB at this time had a lot of confidence in Eric Thames. Like I said earlier, he had absolutely every reason to give up 
on his dream to go to the MLB. He did not. He used his three years in Korea to improve his skills so he could make an eventual comeback. Thames in Korea was able to accept the fact that what he was doing before was not working. He decided that he needed to model a new swing. And it means that the resources there were not as great as they are in the US. He decided that he was gonna do a lot of it online. Now this part, I absolutely love because I used to do this same exact thing. And when studying this story, this is one of my favorite parts. So he would go online and look at swings of guys like Mike Trout and Miguel Cabrera. He would then slow these guys down in slow motion and watch to see exactly what they were doing because he believed he needed to completely remodel his swing if he was going to make a comeback in the MLB. With a little bit of swing tweaking, he was able to drastically improve and have three very, very successful years in Korea. But the one thing I didn't really touch on before is how powerful Eric Thames is. Throughout his whole career, he has been inconsistent with striking out, not always getting base hits, but there's one thing that he has always had is power. This power would allow him to become one of the most popular players in Korea. He had his signature beard that was very, very marketable to a lot of Korean companies. He was on watches. He was all over the place. He was a household name and he recalls a lot of times walking around Korea and being recognized by people all of the time. All this attention and the fact that he hit 348 with 41 home runs allowed him to win an award that is very, very tough and has been won by a lot of great Korean baseball players the MVP award. He was not only getting this attention in Korea, he was also getting it in the US and he was able to finally make his return back to the MLB that he so deserved with all of the hard work he put in Korea when he could have just given up. He was able to sign with the Milwaukee Brewers who ended up cutting one of their most powerful hitters Chris Carter in order to bring him on the team. Now we are about to get in to my favorite part of the story but I kind of just want to look back on everything that has happened to this guy. Like how many people can say they go to Korea for three years, learn the language, learn everything, start from the bottom. Everybody has forgotten about this guy. I, me as a Blue Jays fan, to be honest, I had completely forgotten about this guy. I'm sure the Mariners had too. They all threw him away. He goes there. He has so much success, hits 41 home runs, where it doesn't matter what country you're playing in. That is impressive, and now he gets to go back to the MLB. And I'm sure what was going on in his head the whole time, which would be what was going through my head, is he was eager to prove everybody wrong and to make everybody kind of know that they made a mistake cutting him. Whether or not they did, because I think he did a lot of the fine tuning in Korea, we do not know, but now we get into the part of the story that you're probably most familiar with, his time with the Milwaukee Brewers. At this point with the Brewers, Thames is hitting 326 and is second in the MLB with 11 home runs. The fact that he has been so much more successful than he was in his past stints with MLB organizations, it has gotten a lot of people looking at him as a potential steroid user. He has been tested a lot by the MLB, but so far to no avail, and it appears he has done everything completely clean. One of my favorite things about Eric Thames is every interview you watch of him, every time you see him on the bench, he has an absolutely huge smile on his face. And like, I just told you guys his story. There's obviously more depth that you could get into if you really want to look, but that is the brunt of this guy's story. This is where he came from, and he has earned that smile on his face. It's every kid's dream to make it to the majors and he did that. He had to go through so much set down. He had, like I said before, he had every single reason to quit and he did not. I think we can all look at this story as one of the best stories in, ML, in the MLB. I honestly do. If you guys are in a position, because I think every single kid and me at certain points in my sports career could look at his story at the point when I was feeling my lowest. When the Astros and all those teams were releasing you and he did not give up. He was willing to swallow the pill that was leaving the MLB organization, leaving the farm teams, and in, in, like accepting the fact that he needed to improve his game. Going to Korea and then coming back and having the success that he is having, I think it is absolutely unbelievable. And he is one of my favorite players in the MLB. He has been since I used to watch him. I remember a fun, quick little story to end the video. Uh, I went to the ball games with my uncle and my dad. I remember telling him, this guy looks good. I was like, just watch this leadoff hitter because he was hitting leadoff for the Jays, not very well known. And he, he, I think he had a terrible game, 
But like, it's so funny the things that kind of come come back to you. Because I remember seeing the name at the beginning of the season and being so shocked. So yeah, I really enjoyed making this story video. I want every kid to watch this, take his story, and just never give up on your dreams and goals and go for everything. He went from Korea all the way to being probably one of the most talked about, one of the best players in the MLB this season. And I think we can all look at him as a huge role model. Thank you, Eric Thames, for everything that you have done this season and for just being an absolutely amazing story. And yeah, if you guys enjoy these types of videos, make sure to let me know by dropping a like. I kind of want to, I really enjoy this story time stuff. I like to tell the stories a lot and I think, I think it's going to be a fun series to do. So yeah, God bless every single one of you. Have a great day and I will see you guys next time.